everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining us for our live Q&A number one of three. I'm here with the lovely Lorraine and Brooke. I'm Lisa Shelley. A lot of you have seen me in the community. Um, I'm the community coordinator. If we'd like to do some quick introductions, Lorraine, would you like to say hello? Hi everyone, I'm Lorraine. You've seen me in your masterclass, hopefully, if you've watched episodes one, two and three, which you should have by now because they're available in your study area. I am thrilled to be here tonight and yeah, we're going to have a good, a good session here answering some questions. So yeah, over to you, Brooke. Hi everyone. My name is Brooke and I'm a formulation tutor at Formula Botanica. So I'm here to answer any formulation related questions you might have after watching the masterclass and just help you through and understanding the real basics of formulation after watching your lessons. Thanks, Brooke. I can see the numbers shooting up. This is amazing. I don't think I've seen the numbers shoot up this quickly um, in a while. That's fantastic. If you could let us know where you are in the world, we really like to see that the chat's working to see what countries we can tick off our list. We always manage to tick off a new one every time we go live. And thank you so much for joining us for this live. It really is a special time because you see me go live in the groups, but we rarely have Brooke and Lorraine together answering your questions. So to have this opportunity is valued so just grab it with both hands and ask us a question through the masterclass we would love to hear from you a few of you are chucking questions in already so that is amazing we actually have a support group in our skincare entrepreneur mastermind we've been taking some of the questions from there so i've preloaded some of those questions so we're going to kick off because we've got loads to get through so one of the most important things we keep hearing about what would happen if i launched a skincare brand without having thought through my formulation philosophy. Now, I know, Lorraine, you talk about this all the time. So how do we deal with yes. this? Oh, this is such a good question. And I'm so pleased to see so many people on with us live tonight. This is your chance to get your questions answered. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. So what a fantastic question. What would happen if I launched a brand without having thought through my formulation philosophy? Now, if you've watched episode one in your masterclass, you know that we strongly encourage you to create your formulation philosophy and hopefully you have completed the activities in your workbook as well in order to get those creative juices flowing and to start to develop yours. The best thing, the best way to think of it is if you don't have your formulation philosophy, then you don't really know what you're trying to achieve with what you're making. Now, even before we started uh, the live this evening, I was talking about the fact that I've seen so many people come to us over the years and go, I'm just going to make one lip balm. I'm going to make one facial cleanser. I'm going to make one toner. And that's the one I sell. And unfortunately, then you're just putting out a product in the world without really thinking about why you're putting it out into the world. And I really hope that episode one got got you thinking about why you're trying to do what you're trying to do, because ultimately you need to re you need to figure out how you're going to change the world with your skincare brand. So I think if you didn't have a formulation philosophy, then you would just aimlessly be creating skincare that you quite liked yourself, but which didn't necessarily have a purpose. You weren't trying to actually change someone's life with it. So that's why episode one was all about your formulation philosophy. And that's why we want you to create one. And that's why I hope you have completed your workbook exercises as well. Leave us a thumbs up in the chat if you have done the work already on your formulation philosophy, because I'd love to hear how everyone's getting on with their workbook at the moment. It's the one thing I see actually that's made a real difference to our students that have brands. I think people think it's all about their formulation and what they're doing, but really you need your philosophy first as so you can go through and make the right decisions yeah. about the products you actually want to make. It Absolutely. makes a huge difference when you're designing the products as well, doesn't it, as to what you actually end up designing and how it's going to affect your customers. You really need to know that when you're starting to design the product of what you want it to do in the end goal. I just say thank you to everyone saying hello. We have so many people. We've got people from the Netherlands, London, New Zealand, Jordan, India, France. I mean, there's too many countries to list, but thank you to everybody for popping in so hello. Please continue to leave your questions. Okay, next question. Okay, so what do I do if my formulation doesn't work? You try it again. So there's lots of different, it depends on what's wrong with your formulation really so you the thing when we were talking about this just before we started but we have formulation is something that you've got to experiment with and it's a, it's a learning process so if something doesn't work you've got to write it down in your notebook and then you can go back and you can see what it is you've done wrong and just keep trying it in different ways 
So we say if your emulsion separated, for example, you might have the wrong amount of emulsifier. You might want to heat the oil to a different temperature, lots and lots of different things. So just keep trying and Nobody hopefully you'll we'll get it to work soon enough. Did it right first time, probably. No. So that's no, they don't. Of the game. I remember the first emulsion I made, it was absolutely terrible. <laughs> it split completely the first time I tried it and I thought, oh no, that wasn't right. And now you've but done you... all of our courses and you yeah. know everything. So there we go. Exactly. You get to the end and you think, actually, I can work with that one. And then you come up and you try a new emulsifier or you try another kind of product and that one won't work. But you go through the whole process again of experimenting with it, learning how to work with the, the ingredients you've chosen. And that's all part of the fun, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. OK, so next question. We get this all the time. Do I need lots of lab equipment to formulate? No, you don't. You no. Don't. And you saw Definitely that in episode not. two, didn't you? I mean, I have to say, let me just get my lab in a bag out. Mm. I know that I'm holding up this lovely lab in a bag, but I will give props to Brooke, who came up with the concept and led to us creating the lab in a bag. I'm, I'm afraid we're not selling these yet, but we will in the future. If it kills me, we will get these out. <laughs> but you don't need much. And you saw it in episode two. I mean, give us a thumbs up if you've seen episode two and tell us what your favourite piece of lab equipment was. Because honestly, you can start so simply, can't you? you I mean, can. Brooke, you, you came up with the original concept. You know, you still don't have a lot of equipment, do you? I don't know. I still formulate out of my home office. So there's I don't have any sort of big fancy overhead stirrers. I do have a homogenizer. You'd be shocked as to how little I actually end up using it because the mini whisk and the glass rods just work perfectly fine and half the time it's not really worth getting the whole thing out and having to do all the washing up. So yeah. I started with two beakers and one glass rod and I think I did nearly the entirety of DUSF with just two beakers and a glass rod and the scales. So and you really we don't need a lot. Sorry, we, need, sorry, we mean the we... diploma. I mean the diploma <laughs> yes. in organic skincare formulation. <laughs> you get so used to typing it, you just sort of start automatically brain fills in the blanks. I'm going to quickly yep. throw up this question from Jemima, who's asking, where, we've shown the workbook, so where can they get the workbook? From your study area, as you log in, you should be able to download your workbook. We really recommend that you download this book. It has exercises, tips, your ingredients list, <laughs> our tagline um supplies guide everything so if you're with us for the masterclass you do need to download and um use your workbook with us it's the one thing that's really going to help you and print okay. it out print it out so you print can fill it, it in <laughs> okay so another question what about the temperature of the room in which we prefer prepare our concoctions how does that affect what they're making what do we think so unless you have sort of really extreme temperatures it's not going to make too much of a difference mm -hmm. but it will depend also on what you're formulating so if you're making a body butter for example you might be in a hot climate where your butters will start to melt in which case you would add maybe more of something like cocoa butter which will make it more solid and stop it from melting or you could even add a wax which makes it firmer so you just need to adapt the formulation a little bit based on where you are mm -hmm. so it, it might melt if you end up taking it from one extreme to the other but it's just about finding the ratio of ingredients that work for the temperature in which you're formulating fabulous um so this one kind of mentions it again what steps can we take to ensure the room and the equipment is sanitary to make our emulsions in so can i just jump in here mm -hmm. um there's a there's a concept called uh, good manufacturing practice or uh, GMP, cosmetic good manufacturing practice. There's a, there are even standards for it, and we teach all of this at Formula Botanica, and um, it basically specifies that you'll work hygienically. And we talked a lot about this in episode two already, where you saw me use the isopropyl alcohol, and I've got my spray around here somewhere, where you basically sanitize your equipment before and after, and that's one of the most important things that you make sure you have an empty space. We tend to say, try not to use your kitchen. I know that's mm. quite counterintuitive because it is like cookery. But if you're a bit like me and you've got kids and you've got pets and you've got a very messy spouse, 
doesn't clean the surfaces very well. You don't want to formulate there. So it's a good idea to have a separate workspace where you can just wipe down the table, make sure that there isn't any dust coming in, make sure you haven't got any bugs flying around, make sure that you sanitize everything properly. And that's where the, the isopropyl alcohol comes in. So Brooke, I don't know if you, sorry, you wanted to add something there as well. No, I was just going to say that the best thing to use for sort of sanitizing and disinfecting your equipment is isopropyl alcohol. So just spray everything down get a mix of either you can buy rubbing alcohol which is pre-diluted or you can buy pure 99% isopropanol alcohol or ethanol alcohol if you can get a hold of it and dilute that with distilled water and you can make your own sprays up easy peasy. So you just spray it over everything you use when you're formulating of your glass rods, your beakers, your surfaces and just let it evaporate. There you go Lorraine's got Mine looks exactly the same. It's okay. I keep a little, I just Not take it everywhere exciting. with me. So just spray it down and then leave it to evaporate off and it'll kill anything that it needs to. Try not to use anything sort of too soap based to sterilize stuff because you want to get rid of the bubbles, but you will need to wash everything with soap and water after you've used it. But you don't want to just sort of wash it with soap and leave it at that because you will want to spray it down with alcohol as well. Okay, lots of temperature questions, which I wasn't expecting, Ooh. but what temperature for the cool water bath? What temperature should they be thinking mm. about? Oh, so I'm not sure if it's not really necessarily a specific temperature you have to cool the ingredients down with. You just want them, you want them to be, come down to below 40 degrees Celsius. So you want it colder than that. You could do, I think mine's normally around 15 because I tend to do just either just cold tap water or you can put ice in it as well if you want to speed it up so you don't yeah. have to be specific with the temperature really you just cold enough so that it works well what you saw me do in episode three and i hope you've all watched episode three is i i just used some tap water mm -hmm. um so we talked about it in the education team at formula botanica and we contemplated turning it into an ice bath and putting ice cubes in there but we uh, decided not to in the end because the emulsifier that we're working with in this particular case doesn't work well with it. And he basically, just as Brooke said, want to get the temperature to under 40, 30 degrees Celsius. And so you want it just at a cool temperature. So the water you watched me use in episode three is just tap water, nothing nothing special with it. Good old tap water, it's everything. Um, just to say, we've received loads of questions. There is a lot of questions here on ingredients and we're actually having well, substitutions, things like that. And we do say in our community, and we're going to say it on the live, just to follow the masterclass. I know everyone's really impatient, wants to kind of like get ahead. But we've only done three lessons like so far. So we're just covering the first three lessons at the moment. But we are having another live on Friday. And we have a support thread for that, which I've given to people. So people on our team can kind of add that in the comments. So feel free to add your question there and we will cover that on Friday. We will make sure we cover all of your wonderful questions. And thank you everybody. Oh, I can see Janet's in the chat. Hello, Janet. Yeah. The other great thing is in episode eight of your, of your lesson, you can see it here, customize your natural emulsion. You're going to watch me hold up lots of different oils and hydrosols and emulsifiers and botanical extracts and essential oils and talk about different ingredients that you can use to substitute the ones that we work with. So, Stay tuned for that one. That one will be out on Monday, 27th. Yeah. So, and then obviously there will be lives as well. We have already done a live as well, which is on YouTube and on Facebook, probably easier to find on our YouTube channel, where we talked about how to get hold of the ingredients and talked about you know what, uh, how you can substitute a few of them as well. So check that one out too. And I know it's already had thousands and thousands of views. So dive on that one too. Fabulous. Right, next question. Lots of people into safety, which is very good. Yeah. What personal protective equipment do I need? What should they be thinking of? Brooke? So I think the most important thing you're going to need is your gloves. Mm -hmm. That's definitely the one thing you can't really go without is we've got nice green gloves at Formula Botanica, but you can use blue ones. The colour doesn't... There you go, Lorraine's got them. <laughs> they look Where a bit blue in this light, but there you go. So those are the yep. fundamental ones you definitely need. You're going to want an apron or something just to protect your clothes just in case anything splashes or you get oil strips anywhere if you are going to be working with powders but this is as you get sort of more advanced and you're not going to need them for the masterclass but you'd want 
a dust mask or something to stop you from inhaling powders because they can get into your airways and they irritate a bit and you're going to want some glasses when working with essential oils just in case they splash and so nothing in the what we use is inherently sort of dangerous or toxic necessarily but they can be harmful if used inappropriately so you do want to take the appropriate precautions when using them safety first safety absolutely. first absolutely yeah and it's quite fun as well when you put your apron on and you get your gloves on and you feel like yeah i'm gonna yeah. formulate so yeah pp is feel fun. like a, it is quite fun <laughs> gets you in the mood for formulating doesn't it exactly another favorite this comes up as our favorite piece of equipment every time we ask anybody how many beakers should I get to start with? Everyone's in love with beakers, but how many do they need? Do they need to go overboard? Do they need one? Do they need 10? I would say you're definitely going to need more than one because it's going to be really, really hard to formulate with only one. You would need at least two. So yeah. as I said, I had two to start off with, but I did substitute for glasses on the odd occasion. So I'd say four is probably a really easy number try and get four at least and you want to try and get some different sizes so get at least a 100 mil and a 50 mil and then if you can find them a 250 and a 25 mil as well that gives you a good range of everything there you go that's the 25 mil one they're so cute no, 10 10 mil. is it yeah. Yeah. wow Thinking. i love these really small yeah. you just just get a few to experiment with basically. yeah a few different sizes you can use them every for everything then from mixing up the gums and waters and just get a nice range of sizes but okay. you don't need like to have model. tens of them okay cool. next one sorry i'm just going through everyone's still telling me where they're from <laughs> which is okay i know this one actually came lorraine through on your dms on your personal page i think so would yeah. a scale with a weight capacity uh, 0.01 grams, 500 grams, be suitable for what we're doing? So we talk about this one in episode two. In fact, I hold this very scale up, which is a set of jewellery scales, and they're really easy to start with. I even say in the lesson, you know, they cost about $10 on Amazon. And this one is uh, 0.01 grams to 500 grams. So this is a good one to start with. It's, um, yeah, incredibly inexpensive, really easy to work with. And yeah, once you start to scale up, no pun intended, where you're actually working with more ingredients and maybe you're manufacturing at a larger, uh, larger scale, then maybe you'll want some bigger scales that can handle greater capacity because you might be making, I don't know, five kilo batches rather than 500 gram batches. But something small like this is so easy to start with. And I do recommend just getting some because, yeah, as I said, $10 on Amazon. What more do you want? And get the green ones for bonus points. And Alice, one of our grads, she when she started, she had one of those most formulating L room. So yeah. it just goes to show what you can achieve. She has her own brand. So there you go. Okay. So speaking of equipment, do people need to buy specific branded equipment? Is there a specific one they should be buying from? No, not particularly. Just buy whichever ones you can find and from places that you like shopping from, really. There's not necessarily one specific brand that we recommend. So, and we do actually they have um, Amazon links. We um, do, yeah. To equipment that we recommend. If the team could pop the Amazon links in the comments, that would be great. We try and help you as much as we can. We don't have everything linked in there, but we do have everything linked in there. Mm. You do need for the masterclass, so feel free yeah. to use those links. You don't have to, but um, we try and help you. Okay. So how do people make their own water bath in their own lab? That is a great question. And again, we covered some of that in episode two already. Um, obviously, you watch me with the hot plate and the sort of um, catering style water bath, which is more square at the edges. But you also watch me hold up a pan and a glass bowl. And that is a really easy way to start um, before you maybe buy a hot plate, although hot plates don't really cost that much either, nor do those catering style um, square water baths too. So it's, it's incredibly easy to do, isn't it, Brooke? I mean, I'm guessing you it didn't is. start off with a professional water bath either. No, I didn't. I, I To this day, I still have a milk pan on a hot plate. So you definitely don't need much to do. To start with. I've okay. done it on a stove top before with just a as Lorraine said with the water bath the bowl and the 
pan, but no, so you can, it's really easy to do, just one pan yeah. and a heat source. There you go. Just looking at a lot of the comments, a lot of people saying they can't find certain ingredients. Can I do substitutions? We will cover that as we go. Just a little reminder to everyone. I know everyone kind of feels like they need to know the answer like straight away, but we will cover it, um, I promise. And if you can't find something, just follow the masterclass as we go. You know, just like follow the lessons as they become live, like stay with us, join in the community, share in the community. And um, yeah, just watch the lessons really, because that's what it's all about. So don't panic if you can't. Um, start straight away so next one why do we heat the water phase and oil phase when making the emulsions but that's a very good question so with the emuls emulsion you saw us make in the master class that's the emulsifier we use in that product is a hot process emulsifier so it needs heat to melt in order to work for the emulsion. If you just poured the emulsifier straight into the oil, it wouldn't do anything. There you go, that's the, what Lorraine's holding up there. So it wouldn't do anything if you just poured it straight into cold oil. So what you need to do is we heat it so that the emulsifier melts and sort of joins with the oil itself. It becomes part of the oil phase. It joins together and becomes one phase rather than two separate ingredients. And then you heat the water phase in order to match the temperature of the oil phase so that when you combine them it doesn't separate out straight away because they're two completely different temperatures. So if you had the wa water that was say 20 degrees celsius and your oil phase that was maybe 75-80 degrees celsius the emulsion wouldn't form properly when you tried to combine the two phases. So you heat them together to the same temperature so that when you combine the two phases together they combine to form a nice stable emulsion. Thank you, Brooke. We have a question from, uh, I'm going to someone, say someone's name wrong, Adi Banjo, Banjo, I think. I know we just kind of covered this, but can I use my kitchen as my lab? That is the only place available in my house. If it's the only place available, you kind of have to do what you can. Mm -hmm. We're just, we just yeah. kind of give you the advice as you go. But if it's the only place, then, you know, tell people to get out of the kitchen. You can have dinner later. You've got a masterclass to do and you've already, you know. Absolutely. You You're just going to have to you're just going to have to sanitize it before and afterwards and there will always be a small a small area that you can use because you don't have to spread out a lot when you're formulating either mm -hmm. it's not like um the way some people cook some people in my house cook <laughs> not me you can use a small area rather than using every surface top and every utensil and it's the same with formulating you know you could even i've seen people use a small part of their desk you don't have to have um, a stove there you don't have to have running water it is very easy to replicate a formulation lab somewhere else in your house so don't feel like you have to use your kitchen if you have a small desk somewhere in another room that that is fine too just um yeah just make sure you sanitize before and after fabulous which you, we should, all should be doing you know all the time anyway sanitizing our kitchens <laughs> right so are beakers as strong as Pyrex glass and you can put them from boiling to cold water without them breaking? Yes, they are. So if you get the good boron hardened glass beakers, then yes, they will go from hot to cold. That's what they're designed to do. So they won't break. It's a special kind of glass that they use in scientific lab beakers so that specifically so that it does that. So sorry. To be a police helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's clearly just done something naughty. We're just going to carry on. They're coming all the time. <laughs> Love <scenario>. it. <laughs> I was hoping you couldn't hear that because I had um, earphones in. <laughs> Lorraine's eyes, the expression. I love the way you were hoping we couldn't hear the yeah, helicopter this, coming. That's happened yeah. before. They've stolen something before and no one heard the helicopter this time we did. still lots of questions about asking about substitutions we will get to all of those don't you worry we'll also come back to this and try and answer them for you i'm just going through someone says how cute are those mini beakers we agree loves them too. they're adorable i know you need to get some yeah even just for, just for the fun of it well this gets asked a lot especially in the entrepreneur, um, entrepreneur mastermind what is an emulsifier? 
So an emulsifier is an ingredient that binds oil and water together. And as I said in, I think it was episode three, where we talk about what emulsification is, what an emulsion is and what an emulsifier is. It has a part that loves oil and it has a part that loves water. And that's how it binds the two together. And you watch me pour the oil on the water and the water on the oil that happens later in the masterclass. They don't mix. Now, an emulsifier, interestingly, is part of the surfactant group. So you've got surfactants as the main group and emulsifiers are part of that group. You've got other ingredients in there, which we teach in our in our courses at Formula Botanica as well. Um, I watched someone ask why why do some emulsions um, why do some emulsifiers make soapy emulsions? And what soapy means is when you rub it into your hand, it doesn't go away straight away. It almost has sort of like a soapy feel. That's why some emulsifiers do that. Many emulsifiers do that actually because they are part of the surfactant group and surfactants are the ingredients that make your products foam basically or clean. So um, yeah, an emulsifier blends together oil and water because if you didn't have an emulsifier, they wouldn't blend together and they would separate. Okay, so another one kind of linking to that question, do all emulsifiers need to be heated to 75 degrees Celsius? No, no they no, don't. No. No, so there are so many different ones. I think it is that. Why is that coming up? It's a it's a very standard. Oh, I mean, nowadays there are lots of different types of emulsifiers. Ten years ago, there weren't so many. When I'm talking about emulsifiers, I mean naturally derived ones. Obviously, there were sort of more synthetic ones around then, but there are way more emulsifiers on the market nowadays. And a lot of the old ones used to have to be heated to about 75, 80 degrees. Nowadays, there, you've also got cold process ones, which Brooke was talking about earlier, where you don't even have to heat. Um, they're just liquid and they blend together the oil and water straight away basically as you're as you're working with them but each emulsifier is different there's different emulsifier technology behind all of them you just have to get to know them and experiment with them and this is why suppliers will often give you guidance on how to work with them as well fabulous well, and this is another one we see all the time what is a hydrosol we all think we know what it is but do we really know what it is you want to take this one brooke i can do so a hydrosol is otherwise known as a floral water. So it's usually a byproduct of making essential oils. So it's when they, the essential oils are distilled, the water that comes off from it is called a hydrosol. So it's got the, got the water soluble properties from the essential oil in with the water. There you go. So it's, you can have lots of different plants be made into hydrosols. You can have lavender, orange blossom, rose. There's lots and lots of amazing hydrosols that you can try and it's essentially just a floral water so it's got the scent from the flower they're normally colorless so they won't have a color necessarily but they've got lots of amazing properties with them that come from the plant that they're distilled from we have a question from true what a good name can you recommend a reasonably priced homogenizer we can't recommend specifically one maybe in this slide but we do have um amazon links so please log off the people who are helping with the comments from tanka team if they can put the amazon links in the comments and you can use one of those lots of people still saying hello got people from quebec um from france Japan, Africa. So hello, everybody again. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so next one, mixing a little bit of two things together here. Are oils and hydrosols heat sensitive? Oh, that's a very good question. So it sort of depends on the oil. So some oils are heat sensitive, and you shouldn't eat the heat, heat them to above sort of 40 degrees Celsius, because you'll degrade the botanical properties in them. So that comes down to the iodine level in the oils, which is something that you'll learn further down the line. It's a bit too complicated for this live stream, but hydrosols, you can heat them. They are perfectly fine to be heated because they are created by distilling. So there is heat in the process that creates them. So there's no problem with heating hydrosols, but there are some oils that you would want to heat so it's just about looking into which oils those are and i do believe we have a blog post all about the heat sensitivity in plant oils if someone in the, could very kindly put it in the comments that might be really helpful for you in learning which oils to heat and which ones to avoid heating 
I'm glad you mentioned our blog, um, actually, because we have a comment. Can you suggest any blogs for organic formulation? Well, ours. Paul <laughs> Botanica blog. There is no other blog. We have a ton, of, a ton of blog posts with free formulas to make body butters, lip balms. I mean, where do I start? There is absolutely everything in there, skincare, hair care. So go on our website, find the blog section, uh, check out our blog posts if you haven't. It's such an amazing free resource. You can almost type in anything on the internet and one of the Formula Botanica blogs will be the first thing to pop up, which is um, testament to Lorraine's hard work and the team. But um, yes, it should come up first every single time. If it doesn't, let us, let us know if you want to. Yeah, the blog is everything. Yes. We have over we have about four hundred articles on there. So exactly. go and subscribe. Go and make sure you read it and subscribe to the podcast as well. Yes, exactly. Sorry, Lauren, I'm just reading. I feel like you need four pairs of eyes when you're um, doing this. Uh, There's a lot okay. of questions and comments coming mm -hmm. past. There really is. So today's lesson is great. Thank you. Sorry for the simplicity of the topic, but. <laughs> But this but this first happy but they have a question sorry Lorraine is the amount of orange hydrus complete and the quantity is sorry I'm going to read it as said is 37.5 without mixing it with distilled water please explain maybe Lorraine you can decipher that question slightly <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to hide it while you answer because I feel like you've been cut off that's all right yeah otherwise I'm like I'm down here um so uh, basically, I think there was a bit of confusion there about what the hydrosol was. So a hydrosol, as Brooke explained, is the byproduct of essential oil distillation. Now, hydrosol producers don't like thinking of their product, their ingredient as a byproduct. But for, for ease of explanation, let's think of it that way. You're taking all this plant matter, you're distilling it down, and you're creating a tiny amount of essential oil with it. And then you're left with all this water that's come out of the distillation process. That is what's used and called as a hydrosol. So we used 73 and a half grams, not 37 and a half, but 73 and a half grams in the um, in the masterclass episode, in episode three. And I hope you've all watched it. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, it's not mixed with distilled water. It is just water, flower water that's come out of that distillation process, basically. Well done. Well done for deciphering that, Lorraine. That was extra, <laughs> extra points. Um, quick comment from Kui. He says, any replay, please. I missed quite a lot of this talk. Yes, of course you can replay. You can, as soon as it's ended, I think you can actually go back and watch from the beginning. So if you are joining us from the middle, don't worry. Wherever you're joining us from, you can always go back to the beginning. And also leave us a question, then we'll come back and answer it after the live. Um, so many questions coming in it's amazing so it's amazing just watching them all flying past isn't it i know yeah you can barely yeah, keep up thank you for the team for reminding everyone we'll, we'll cover um customizing your formulation um in episode eight yeah. this is one actually a little bit interesting from Mizu. how to check if the ingredients are good quality how do people know what they've ordered is going to be good it depends on the ingredient supplier that you use, basically. And that sometimes is a little bit of trial and error. I mean, we've given you uh, a supplier guide at the back of your workbook, which yeah. uh, lists various suppliers that we rate and that our students rate. Now, yeah, here it is, a list of global suppliers. It's got the big picture with it. And then there's a whole list of them here. We try and put um, co companies in here all around the world. Now, I appreciate we haven't got every single country represented here. And I know we have an incredibly diverse and international audience. But many of the companies listed in here will ship internationally. And that's also why we chose them. Because not only do we rate them, but they also will ship to many different countries around the world. I think the best thing to do is trial and error and word of mouth, but it's the same with many different suppliers in many different sectors. And that's also why we have such a fantastic Formula Botanica community, because our students are often recommending different suppliers to each other. And in fact, when you enroll with us, you get a whole supplier guide with um, about 300 different suppliers listed in it from around the world. And, and we update that every single year, in fact, every quarter now with, uh, with feedback from our community. So I'm afraid you have to work with the ingredient supplier a little bit. You also have to, you know, try the ingredients for yourself. You have to listen to feedback from others and also look at the documentation they provide, because if they're going out of their way to teach you about how to use your ingredient, then you know that you're probably in a, in a good place. 
but the people doing this masterclass, we have done our best with trying to give you the supplies that we recommend. And more importantly, the supplies that our students recommend. We do listen to our community and take that feedback on board and then put it in our materials and pass it on to you guys. So, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I will say is the suppliers that are listed in here do tend, not all of them, but many of them, particularly in North America and Europe, they do tend to stock the ingredients that we're using in the masterclass. And I have seen lots of people say, I'm in the US, I can't get the ingredients. Just go and try these. I mean, number one at the top, Formulator Sample Shop has most of them, for instance. So don't don't think that you can't get them in your country or that they can't be shipped to you because they can. Um, obviously, you can't walk into a supermarket. There doesn't tend to be a one-stop shop for everything because there are just thousands and thousands of cosmetic ingredients. But just, you know, play around and see what's out there. Yeah. Okay, so I think... This person has tried and tested. Harida says, is it normal not to get up to batch size of the lotion? For example, I made a 100 gram lotion and only got 80 grams after. So is that normal? Brooke? It can be sometimes, yes. So when you possibly want more, if you did she decant it into a different beaker? Because in that case, then you would have different you get a little bit left behind which could mm -hmm. be contribute to loss of weight when you're heating your water phase you can sometimes get evaporation from the water phase which could reduce the amount and also if you measured the ph which you wouldn't do for the master class yet because we haven't shown you how to do that yet but when mm. you measure the ph you will have to scale up the batch slightly so you've got enough to measure the ph so it's it's a 20 grams is quite a lot to have missing yeah. so sort of two three grams you could possibly explain but i think 20 grams is quite big to have missing so i'm not quite sure i think harida you've stumped lorena brooks they look they're not quite sure possibly. where that 20 grams has gone maybe there's no, no. maybe we just don't know where that 20 grams has gone it's disappeared. What I would recommend, Harida, is that you write down exactly what you did. You know, just yeah. like we say in episode two, if you didn't write it down, it didn't happen. That's one of our mantras at Formula Botanica. Get yourself a lab book. I don't know where I put mine. Oh, it's right here. And literally write down every single step along the way and then go back and analyze it and see, you know, maybe mm. I heated my, my phases for, I don't know, 40 minutes, like Brooke said, maybe some mm. of it evaporated. You don't have to heat it for that long, obviously, because... No, no you don't need to and um or maybe a lot was left in the beaker i didn't use a spatula to get it all out that sort of thing so write it down in great detail and then try again and see what you're left with the second time and the third time and you might find that actually it was just an anomaly it just someone it just went <laughs> these things happen you know it just happens yeah. when you formulate and speaking of yeah. trial and error we have a question from jacqueline she says oh let me show that again sorry she says, how do I know which ingredients will work best together to create my desired goal? Is it just trial and error? Is there a cheat sheet? Some recommended combinations to guide us. I noticed Lorraine reacted at cheat sheet there. But... <laughs> I wish. I wish. Well, yeah, Me so too. Like, we're using it, Jacqueline. Um, what do we think? There are literally thousands of cosmetic ingredients. So you will know what type of ingredients work well together. And we cover all of this in our courses, obviously, um, because there are different categories of ingredients that you that you work through and you'll know which categories work with which. Um, I often I've had so many people come to me over the years and say, I want an exact list showing me exactly what does work with each other and what doesn't work with each other. But the fact that there are literally thousands of cosmetic ingredients means that doesn't exist. So a lot of it is trial and error, but I would go beyond trial and error and say it comes from experience. And I know that a lot of the uh, graduates who've gone through our courses and I know it's a bit dark in my office, so you can't quite see it, but I've got all these graduate products behind me. You know, they won't have gone through just one formulation. They would have gone through 30, 40, maybe even 50 formulations of each product that they sell to make it the very, very best that they can. And that's really exciting. So there is an, quite a, a degree of experimentation in there. But that is the fun part of learning how to formulate. So I say go and have fun with it. OK, go have fun. Right next person is having scale issues i don't know if we can answer this one but maybe there is an answer so this person has a green scale They're only a couple of months old but i've noticed that the readings have started to fluctuate without adding or removing anything from the scale so is this something that happens or is this just a person just unlucky 
it Try may well just there. be something faulty in the scale. I mean, yeah. it's, it's hard to say. It's not something that happens to me. Saying that they aren't, you know, they aren't like laser precision scales because you're starting off with something fairly cheap and cheerful, to be honest. Yeah. If you want to start scaling up, I keep using this, no pun intended, to, to get the next set. I mean, there are, you know, very expensive cosmetic scales that you can invest in as well. But I would say just maybe buy another set. There might be something wrong with it. <laughs> so the, end the only other thing I would say you could possibly try is changing the batteries. Is if it runs on batteries, sometimes when the batteries start to die, it yeah. can do things like that. So try changing the batteries first, and if not, just buy another one because they're not overly expensive. So good advice. <laughs> okay, lots of people asking for blogs on things like argan oils, uh, sorry, argan oil recipes and things like that. I would just suggest going onto our blog section. Well, Googling, not Googling, searching for argan oil and all the blogs we have, <laughs> Googling, um, searching for argan oil on the blog and all our blogs coming out featuring argan oil will appear. Um, people asking for supplies in Dubai, check your workbook. That is why we've done the workbook. So you can see people asking for videos. We're going to say, obviously, check the blog section again. I've seen a couple of people ask as well about what comes next. They've asked if there are any courses at Formula Botanica. Um, mm -hmm. I will just say we do open up enrollment for our International Organic Skin Care Entrepreneur Program next week. Um, that's, you know, not part of the masterclass. It comes after the masterclass. So if you do want to continue, that will be happening next week. So if you are interested, come and check it out on formulabotanica.com. Which I'm sure many people will be. Okay, next question. Can I use a laser thermometer instead of one with probes like you have displayed in the lessons? So can they change Yes, you up? can. Yes, you can. I have a laser thermometer and it works perfectly fine. So if that's what you've got, then there's no problem with using it. One thing I would say is when you're measuring the product, you have to try and stir it so that you get a consistent measurement, to get a more accurate measurement if you're stirring the product rather than just sort of leaving it stationary and because then you're only taking the measurement of that one tiny little bit so try and stir it so that it's thoroughly combined and then you get a more accurate measurement but yes you can use a th the laser ones Fabulous. so do i need big tools like a modernizer or overhead stirrer no you do no, not you don't you can start so simply and so easily. You know, the lab in a bag, we showed you it in episode two. Here it is again. It's so cool. Everyone wants a lab in a bag. <laughs> we, we do really want to sell them. Um, you don't need to start big. And the other thing I will say is I've watched so many people come to Formula Botanica over the years and be like, right, I'm starting your course. I'm enrolling with you. And then at the end, I'm going to make a whole series of emulsions. And those are the ones I'm going to sell. And then they go through the course and they go, you know what, I changed my mind. I'm now actually going to move into facial oils or hair oils or balms or whatever. And they realize they don't need a homogenizer anymore. So when you're first starting out, I recommend keeping it really simple because you might want to invest in some big tools in the future. If you've, you know, if you've got big batch uh, sizes coming in that you have to manufacture, but that's a whole different world. And that's not where pretty much any of you are at the moment. So I would recommend staying really small and just sticking with the basic tools that we covered in episode two. So we have a question from Reem who says, panicked almost, we need to know where the best sources are to buy material, but that is why we have the workbook. <laughs> Paul Lorraine always has to keep <laughs> grabbing this workbook. Every, see, sorry, mine's, oh my God. Mine's yeah, you've both right. got one. Yeah. <laughs> we have. <laughs> I was thinking it was already on the side of the room. There we go. It's in there. That's why I keep showing you questions like this. Supply guide, ingredients, everything that we're doing, everything to help you as you go through all of the lessons are in the workbook. I know people will continue to ask for a whole of eight lessons. <laughs> Where is the workbook? It is in your study area, right at the top. There's a big red button. We made it like the panic button so you can't miss it. So when you uh, log into your study area, hit the red button, then the workbook is yours. Jemima says she needs a cheat sheet. We all need so a cheat I. sheet. But, um, <laughs> and Victoria says, I'm interested in the links to the podcast and the blogs on our website. can easily find them on our website. Yeah. Don't worry. One thing I will say with the cheat sheet idea, though, mm -hmm. is 
take notes on the ingredients when you use them and you will create your own cheat sheet. So if you take the notes, get yourself a notebook, take notes on the ingredients you use, what happens when you mix them with other ingredients, and your lab notebook will become your own cheat sheet. So there is no one size fits all cheat sheet, you've got to make one yourself. But then as you progress as a formulator and you start, you might come in six months time and think, oh, I want to make another shower gel, for instance, and you've got a formulation that you did six months ago. You can flick through your lab, lab notebook, see everything you did, what worked well, what didn't, and then you're not starting from scratch then the next time you want to develop a product like that. So your lab notebook and and that notebook you keep on ingredients will become your own cheat sheet. Your Bible, so to speak, formulation yeah. Bible. Um, oh, let me get from there. The so questions are just flooding I in. Know, I mean, I just, they just are. In case, and lost just in case lives. everyone doesn't know, I mean, we we're live on YouTube and Facebook at the moment, so that's why they're just going because yes. they're coming in from, so sorry from all of it. That's why I'm looking left to right. I don't think we can go into too much detail here, but when you add, um, suppose now, so when you add your ingredients to get to 100%, do you include preservatives? Yes, Lots and we will be doing that in episode seven. There's a whole, in fact, episode six and seven are just about preservation. And uh, so, yes, don't worry about that. In fact, I mentioned it as well in episode three today. So if you haven't watched that episode yet, go and watch it. And then I'll show you exactly what's still to come, because you're quite right. If you're making a water based product, it needs to contain a preservative. But all of that will be explained in episode six and seven. And you can see some of that coming up in your workbook as well. And I know we've had a couple of other questions in about uh, percentages as well. You know, a lot of people are saying, how do I calculate my formula to be 100 percent, that sort of thing? Don't worry about it. Just make the formulation that we make in the masterclass, which is 100 grams. And that is 100 um, percent. We don't go through percentages and calculations in the masterclass. It's just too much. We cover all of that in our uh, award winning online courses. If you want to take that further afterwards, uh, but just don't don't stress too much about um, percentages right now. Just follow the formulation that we've given you. It's been designed that way because we know yes. what people are thinking and you know what they want to get involved with, but we've designed it in a certain way where we're covering each step over the course of the nine lessons. So nobody panic. Okay, yeah. so next question. From Wix and Bath Company, I'm assuming that is. The lotion you made for lesson three, will that be the same lotion you will be using along the whole masterclass or do we make one each time? How does it work? It will be the same lotion. Um, now saying that, if you want to formulate along with me today in episode three, I'm not going to be adding anything to it until episode five, which I appreciate for you is in two days time. So it might be worth storing it in the fridge until then and just using that as an experimental lotion or just use this as an experiment that you've done today and you can always discard it and then do it again on um, Friday. Yes, Friday, and then again on Sunday when we preserve the whole thing. Or just sit back and watch it all and then try it all in one big go. I talked about this briefly in the live I did on Facebook today as well in our Skincare Entrepreneur Mastermind group. It's up to you. You either follow along with each stage, maybe store it in the fridge in the meantime, and then preserve it fully on Sunday, or just do the whole thing in one go on Sunday and go back and watch all of the episodes in one go. Like a little Netflix series. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is a trick question. I'm kind of laughing. I'm going to throw it up anyway. I don't have a thermometer. What can I do to check the temperature? Finger? <laughs> how do they? How, does, <laughs> how no, do they know? No. No. <laughs> do not stick your fingers Think. in there to measure the temperature. <laughs> how are they? Made? I'll give it to the experts, but how you're going to know the temperature, I don't know. What do you think? You're going to need to get a thermometer. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the exactly. yeah. point. Up anyway but i will say you can if you can't get like the one that we use in the master class just go into a cookery shop and get a food thermometer for now that will be absolutely fine as long as you sanitize the prong or whatever it is that you use in there or we talked about laser thermometers there are so many different types of food thermometers that you can use in fact the one i use with the prongs in episode three is a food thermometer so don't get anything expensive just get something fairly simple no fingers. Okay. No fingers. <laughs> Angela asks, sorry if I asked this before, I didn't see the answer. Are we using hydrosol over using a pure oil? 
we're using a hydrosol we're using a carrier oil and we're using an emulsifier in episode three and then we add botanical extracts to that in episode five and then we preserve that in episode seven have i don't know if you've managed to watch the masterclass episodes yet angela but if you do go check out episode three in which i explain what each of the ingredients in that particular episode is so go and check it out and hopefully it will all make sense then but if it doesn't come and post up in the group afterwards and we'll be happy to chat to you mm -hmm. So we have another question. This comes up a lot in the group. It's a good one to know. What is a carrier oil? That's a very good question again. So a carrier, <laughs> they are all good. They've got lots of very good questions today. So a carrier oil is an oil that we use as is a foundation ingredient. So it's an oil that's normally pressed out of an ingredient such as almonds, grape seed, raspberry seed there's hundreds of thousands of different carrier oils you can use and they come from lots of different kinds of ingredients but it's a pressed ingredient to extract the oil that comes out of that ingredient so that seed that nut whatever it is let's take almond oil as an example because that's what you use in the master class so that then the oil that comes out of that is what's known as a carrier oil so it's a we call them carrier oils because they're not the carriers of other ingredients they're normally used as it's a term that comes from aromatherapy when making massage oils of where you combine essential oils and a carrier oil that carries the essential oils into the body but so it's just a term that sticks then in the natural community but it's essentially it's a cold pressed oil it could be just a extracted oil it's just an oil it's just different names for the same thing essentially so the olive oil you find in your kitchen is very similar to what you would have as a carrier oil. You can get olive oil as a carrier oil as well. So it's just an oil we use to carry other ingredients and they do have lots of wonderful properties in their own right as well. Thank you very much. Another important question. We have kind of answered it, but lavender bag, how much? Not I'm sale. afraid they're not for sale yet. Yet. I just want to put the word that. yet out there. Although I said that on um, on Facebook yesterday and then several people were like, well, if you had it for sale, I would buy several right now. And I was like, but it's, it's yeah. not. So I'm afraid we're just not quite at the stage of doing so. But I will make sure that somehow or other we get these up for sale next year. We're working on it. We even have one of the team members who got who got tasked with that today. I can see <laughs> Lucky that. person, <laughs> and she she gladly took on the the challenge. Gladly took on the challenge. So yeah, we are going to try and do that. And I've seen a couple of questions as well about our aprons and our workbooks, our lab books. We want to sell all of this to you because we know you need this stuff and we know you want it. So mm -hmm. stay tuned. It has been on my wish list for a good six years now. So I'm going to make it happen next year somehow. Fabulous. So I'm going to put this question up as an example of something you might be answering in the future. We'll see what Lorraine and Brooke think. So what is the best preservative for cream or serum? Is this something we're going to be covering kind of as we go? Yes. In episode six, I am going to be sharing with you your checklist for choosing the right natural preservative. You can see it already in your workbook. So if you get this up, you'll see what I mean. It's not all there you're going to have to fill in some of the blanks as well by watching the episode um so yes we're going to walk you through that because there is no single preservative that works for every single formulation now we've chosen a preservative called preservative eco or geoguard ect it works well in this type of formulation which is why we chose it it's also easy to work with um, again i explain all of this in episode seven so stay tuned for that um, there are many different preservatives out there we list another i think it's four or five actually in um in your workbook that it's it on page 24 uh, when we talk about different ingredients that you can use in episode eight so we will be coming to all of this stay tuned okay we have mom aroma what a, fan, what a fantastic name so when i started out i was determined to go the and andrus route and hydrus and hydrus route sorry then i started making emulsions and i love them I thought she was trying to say androgynous then, so I was like, oh. <laughs> So there you go, just a testament, another happy customer. Right, next question. So, can I use different oils or hydrosols to make the cream base you made in lesson three? Yes, you can, absolutely. 
if you can if you can only get a different hydrosol or a different carrier oil go with it just make sure it's a carrier oil and not an essential oil but yes and we talk more about this in episode eight so stay tuned for that um, it is very straightforward. I will walk you through alternatives. And then episode eight is even there to make you a shopping list, basically, for other ingredients that you want to go and buy. And I just want to say, as we've got so many people watching at the moment, I'd love for you to leave me a comment in the chat and tell me which of the three available episodes you've watched so far. Have you watched just one? One, two, three? None at all? You know, let's fess up if you haven't watched any of them, because I want to I want to see in the comments which ones you've watched. I did a post today and there were quite a few people that actually had already watched three episodes. So well done to those people. But as Lorraine says, you don't have to watch all those three. It's good if you keep up to time with them just so you can join in the community, post your workbook, ask advice from people that have watched the other episodes, but just watch yeah. them when you can. But yeah, we do recommend you kind of stay with the timing if possible. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry, Lisa. I've just realized I've messed up all your comments. <laughs> Well, that's because they're all flooding in now. How have you done that? Oh, just you wait till you scroll up. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, I did notice it's kind of jammed. It, it, won't, let me, it won't let me come on. So, Marsha says, I'm just beginning. Where do you think I should start? I'm interested in the course. So, watch this. If you're interested, well, you're more than one with us. If you're beginning, I. I recommend you watch the whole masterclass from start to finish because you're going to get so much out of this. Um, and please do watch all of them. And I'm, I'm loving seeing all the comments. Watched all three at least three times. That's so cool. So get stuck into the masterclass and watch as many, watch all of it and complete the workbook. And then once you've got to grips with the basics, as I said, we open enrollment for our International Organic Skincare Entrepreneur Program next week. In fact, after the masterclass, we're going to be running a huge live webinar um, which is on Wednesday evening. I'll be there. Lisa will be there. And we'll be walking you through the blueprint for starting um, to become an organic skincare entrepreneur. So I'd say tuned for that one and then consider becoming a student with Formula Botanica, like the 14,000 plus students who have already before you. Yep. Join the club. So great question from Tassin. Any suggestions or recommendation for any books after the masterclass? Uh, not books, actually. Courses. I, you know, I can very easily say, you know, go buy this book, go buy that book. There are really not any good botanical formulation books out there on the market. They're all recipe books. They won't teach you how to be a formulator. So if you want to be a formulator, come and enroll with us and we will take care of you. Um, and obviously we're giving away all of this for free at the moment. And then on October 5th, the whole masterclass goes away. All of the episodes disappear and everything will be gone. Um, so if you do want to then continue with your studies, then obviously we will be welcoming you with open arms. And as Lorraine says, we do look after you when you become one of our students from beginning to end. From when you start learning, when you don't know what anything is, in the middle when you're doing your course, to the very end when you have a brand, like a lot of our students, we're always there with you. So. Yeah. Okay, question from Jana. How about cold-based emulsifiers? Do you use them? Do we use them in our We do, our yes, we do. We even actually have a formulation on our blog that uses cold process emulsifiers. So yes, they are, they're brilliant. So there's lots of other things you can do with cold process emulsifiers. And as I mentioned earlier, there are some carrier oils that are heat sensitive, which related to one of the questions we had. And with a cold process emulsifier, you can use all of those heat sensitive ingredients without having to worry about heating them at all. So no, they're brilliant ingredients. I highly recommend trying them. So if you can get a hold of one, definitely give it a go. They're fun. Okay. They are fun. Next question for Christelle. Hello. Hello, Christelle. Are we storing the emulsion we did in episode three in the fridge? If you want to, yes, or just dispose of it and then do the whole thing again at the end. Um, I would, if if your emulsion is stable and it's come out of the, the, the water bath, which it should be, if it's come out of the water bath and it's looking good, then yeah, pop it in the fridge. Um, but if you want to do it all again, I recommend just having a go at it. That's why we, um, in our shopping list, we recommended you get enough to make the emulsion three times. Okay, Manuela says recovering fixing formulations can you reheat the formulation again to add more emulsifier do you need to re-add 
preservatives. Now, so we don't recommend you sort of try and fix a formulation once it's failed necessarily. It will depend on the formulation you're making, but with emulsions especially, and when it comes to things like preservatives, it's best not to try and alter it once you've got a formulation. You need to have your formulation written down and worked out before you start making your product and then you make the product. If that product then works, fantastic. If it doesn't, you then have you can have a look and see what went wrong, what the problem is, and go back to your notes and try and fix it in the formulation. But you can't sort of take an emulsion you've completed, heat it again, add a bit of more emulsifier, and it it doesn't work that well unfortunately. Because anything like the know what we're doing. Just mm. you know, this person I think wants to like get ahead, but we've only we're only three lessons into the masterclass. So yeah. just follow exactly what we're doing. As Lorraine said before, write it down and as we go through when we get to lesson eight, you'll be able to ask more complicated questions, look for substitutions and kind of be brave and start to do things like this. But for the moment we're saying try and keep it simple. Yep. Um, God, look, you have messed up these comments, Lorraine. Lots of people. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Lots of people mentioning not using fingers to do uh, to do temperature. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so Menely, Mel sorry, Melanie says, how long are the episodes going to be visible for? So, how long is our masterclass going to be available? Great question. Until October fifth. And that is also when we close enrollment for our International Organic Skincare Entrepreneur Programme at 4 p.m. UK time. So if you want to know exactly what time on October 5th, it will be 4 p.m. when we shut the whole thing down and then it will be gone. And I'm afraid you don't have continued access to them after that. Also, the team will then be back hard at work supporting all of our enrolled students. I mean, we have many thousands of students going through their courses at the moment, um, which is why we're taking time out at the moment to come and teach you, which is why we have these three live tutor support Q&As. But after that, obviously, our education team will be back at work. I mean, we're here on the live, but I don't know if you noticed in the comments, the team is also there just answering that. I don't know how they're doing it. They're going so fast. I'm watching all their answers come past. So we're doing our very best to support you as much as we can. But yes, October 5th, it will all be gone. I've seen lots of people saying they watched three. So thank you. That is absolutely fantastic. That's what we like to see. Um, we're just going to show this again, just so we can get the answer fully, fully out there. How do people get the workbook? On the study area. <laughs> Log into your study area, sign up for the masterclass. And then at the top of your study area, there's a big red panic button. <laughs> you can't miss it. It's massive. Click on it. It says download your workbook. Click on the red button and it will download your workbook. Now, I will say if you're watching it on a phone, I don't think that's very useful. So download it on a desktop and send it to a printer. Print it out so you have it in your hands. And actually, we've seen dozens of photos, workbook selfies, actually, of people doing selfies with their workbook. And I encourage you to do one, too. Um, but, yeah, print it out. And then you have it in your hands and you can fill it in as you go along. And, you know, we were just talking about the method that you use to make the emulsion, like uh, lesson three, episode three, on page 12, we've got all these text boxes for you to fill in about the exact method you followed, the observations that you you had, your thoughts on the, the final emulsion skin feel, etc. Go and fill them in because this will help you during the formulation as well. Well done. I won't ask you anything like that again, but it's just good to get it's just good to get the message. I, I think I've answered this question about 600 times in the last three days. It's in your study area. <laughs> we have come to the end of our question so thank you for everyone who has asked us a question someone i can't actually find it um now but someone is saying oh here we go let's see if we can put this up <clears throat> so can we ask questions later if you do have a question if you're watching this after we have finished the live then you can add up your question oh i will make sure brooke comes back to answer it for you sorry brooke, <laughs> to give you some extra work not not you the rain and we will do our very best. But just to repeat, we're kind of talking up to the third episode of the Masterclass on this live, but we do have another live. If the people um, who are helping with the comments could please put that support thread um, 
through to the Skincare Entrepreneur Mastermind. Add your question there. I will be back. I think it's with Ken and Barbara Friday evening, 8 p.m. I think that's correct. Um, and we will answer your question. Thank you, everyone that has contributed. You've been absolutely fantastic. Sorry about the police helicopter. I hope we've been, able to, <laughs> hope we've been able to help as many people as possible. People are still kind of asking about the workbook. Um, we really yeah. recommend, yeah, people are if they do need it. We really recommend you print this off. It, it's your accompaniment. It's going to be your best friend throughout the course of the masterclass. We've done it because we yeah. know it's the best way to help you go through. And as Lorraine says, when you're writing things down and you can really see it, it becomes so much clearer mm. and it's going to be your um, support as we go through all the way to um, episode eight. Yeah, it's going to be brilliant. So make sure if you haven't watched all of the masterclass episodes yet that you dive in there now. They are 10 minutes long. That's it. Everyone has 10 minutes a day. You can watch this in the bath. You can watch this in bed. You can watch this while you're having lunch. You've got 10 minutes. No excuses. Jump on it now. And I want to hear how you're getting on. So come and post up afterwards and tell us how you're getting on as well. And episode four will be at tomorrow at 2 p.m. UK time, 9 a.m. Eastern time, EDT. And at that point, we'll be walking you through our ingredient research form, which is in your masterclass workbook already. And I'll be walking you through some of the main criteria that you need to think about when you're choosing ingredients. So tune in for that. And then on Friday, we're taking your emulsion and we're making it botanical using all of that work from episode four on how we're researching plants, how we're researching extracts. So exciting. We're going to be working with sea buckthorn oil. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. And that's what's going to make your cream, which I have here, bright yellow. So stay tuned. Make sure you tune into all the episodes. Don't slack off. You've got this. 10 minutes a day. And I can't wait to hear how you're getting on. Thank your you very much, Lisa. Tomorrow, it's called How to Choose Your Botanical Ingredients, isn't it? So That's just right. to remind everyone, a lot of the questions here we can't answer because just this live isn't for that. We've, we've started... Um, up to lesson three but we will be able to answer your questions just add it onto the support thread and we'll be able to answer all of your ingredient and botanical questions so thanks very much thank you, thank you everybody bye thank you very See much everybody have a lovely evening